the... You know, you look at Frost Nixon, the, the intonation is scarily lifelike. So, presumably, you sat with tapes for hour after hour after hour? Well, know? yeah, I grew up in Southern California, so I watched this guy yeah. all my life. Uh, he was an omnipresent political figure in, in Southern California. And uh, I was just burning with the desire to do this show. Uh, so a friend of mine is the leading American authority on the tapes, and is, a matter of fact, the professor who filed the lawsuit to make the tapes public in the first yeah, place yeah. on the grounds that we paid for them. We own them. And so uh, I'd, I'd been basically rehearsing for this a long time. So the premise of this piece is what? It's not straightforward reportage, is it? It is, is it? literally, word for word, the craziest conversations from the White House tapes done absolutely verbatim with a wonderful cast. That's Henry Goodman as Henry Kissinger. Yeah. And, uh, I love that long, low uh, grunt. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's very unhappy at the, at the fact that he has to listen to Nixon burning with resentment over the fact that he never got invited to the Kennedy White House. Yeah. Uh, the amazing thing about him, one of the amazing things about him is he was a man with deep, deep resentments. He gets to the top of the American political system and he can't let go of them. He can't let go of these burning resentments. He can't. He has. Is he no, eaten away by them? He's eaten away by them, which could either be a tragic character flaw or, I think, a, a, in this case, a comic character flaw. I mean, he is the quintessential 20th century American, the self made man, who then, as a favor to all of us, turns into a self destroyed man, mm. which, you know, that's the switcheroo. That's the, the key to comedy. Do you find him a likable man? Likeable oh, character? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I'd say he's a complex, fascinating man. I think he uh, is uh, almost unique in political history, at least in America. He didn't even have the, the, the skills to pretend to be likable. Normally, guys go into politics, they've got a good smile, they love to talk, they love to touch, they love to do all that stuff. He was very standoffish, very kind of over here, uh, very improbable that he would ever rise in politics, and he did. Will history judge him differently to the way we look upon him now? Well, we are kind of our history at this point. He's yeah, but I mean, much later on, I mean, when they look back with, with, you know, sort of a century on. Very checkered. I mean, uh, domestic politics, he did a lot of interesting things. He's certainly to the left of where Obama is now. He started the uh, Environmental Protection Agency. He actually made a speech at one point in his career, didn't do anything about it, but gave a speech calling for a guaranteed annual income for all citizens. Nobody would do that these People days. People forget that. Yeah. <laughs> On the other hand, he prolonged the Vietnam War for a number of years. A lot of people died. Uh, Henry Kissinger got a Nobel Peace Prize for ending it. Yeah, who's sitting there opposite going, mm. Mm, uh, yeah. You got David Frost involved with this as well. Well, David Frost got himself involved. He saw the, the pilot episode of the show, which we did a couple of years ago, and he came up to us afterwards and said, I love this. I can't do David Frost, but <laughs> I love this and I'd love to be part of it. Uh, so when we got to do the series, we called him up and said, Would you like to do the explanatory little introductions and he said I'd love to and I had the great opportunity of helping with the scripts for him and being there with the taping of him and having some of the wonderful conversations that you couldn't avoid having with him he was just so curious and so eager to, to talk about so many things and having had that enormous great long interview with him that they made Frost Nixon on the yeah. back of yeah. do you have to rather than just sitting listening and then reenacting the tapes do you find yourself endeavoring to get you must you're, you're an actor endeavoring to get inside the man do you feel you got to know him any better doing this yeah uh, you can't avoid it you're you're as you act you have to sort of uh, be open yourself to Mm. Flashes of it. So of this whole chip on the shoulder, you think, this resentment, why was it there? Why did it carry on so long? Uh, he came from California. He saw all these people who were privileged on the east coast of the, of the United States who seemed to get ahead in the race a lot more than he did a lot faster. But uh, the most amazing insight that I had, uh, at the end of his administration, he's about to give his resignation speech. There's a, a scene that's taped, and we have it, uh, and it's the eve of his humiliation and he walks into this room with this TV crew and as I say he has no small talk, no gift for small talk, no gift for people at all and he starts making jokes with these folks and I always saw that scene and I thought this is the most peculiar thing in the world and then as we're rehearsing it I realized he's beginning his next campaign, his campaign for rehabilitation. He wants this crew to go out and say Guy's about to quit, and he's such a nice guy, he's cracking jokes. Yeah, it started there. It, it started, started again. There. You have got a minute on the clock. <laughs> You've also each got a copy of the sequence of instructions in front of you. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get knotted. <laughs> 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 you, 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 
the strictly <laughs> cold now. You will. Okay, now that you've worked your upper body, how about we move to the lower body? That's dangerous. Yeah.